been a couple of weeks since uh, I've uh, put a video. Oh yes, I did this uh, video probably about 2007 and it's about uh, homosexuality. So uh, I'll talk, this actually is in go on Google, but Google of course finished, so I didn't want to lose this. Okay, have a listen, this is 22 minutes. Well, I'm actually waiting for something to happen uh, in the newspapers. So I thought I actually would uh, put something up today because I happened to look in the paper uh, yesterday, Tuesday, February the 5th, 2008, from the Sydney Morning Herald. And it has something to do with the uh, homosexual, uh, the Christian and the church. And we notice in, uh, in Sydney, we notice that uh, there's a whole group of Anglicans, of course, who are sort of not too happy that churches are accepting homosexuality so in ministry and that sort of thing. So there appears to be a problem with Christians uh, in churches, not only just the Anglicans, I guess, it's the same with uh, a lot of churches around the world have made decisions that, okay, uh, homosexuality is all right, and the reason it's all right is because we're under a, a covenant uh, where love is the thing that really matters. Uh, everything is basically equal. So no person has any right to condemn homosexuality. Now that's absolutely right. I think last time, I'm sure at the last video, I did talk about how our job is not to condemn people. Yes, I definitely did. I did talk about that. And uh, that's right. So you can be a homosexual. Our job is not to condemn them. We are here to preach the gospel. Now what is all this then about, here this notice here, it says, Bishop condemn Sydney's dissent. So what some bishops were saying in the Anglican uh, area, uh, Sydney area has no right to, to uh, if you like, not go to the Lambeth Conference. What it has to say. But some of them have decided they are not going to go because some people in the Anglican Church that go to Lambeth, the Lambeth Conference, uh, support homosexuality. Now the interesting question really needs to be what should you really do in this situation? Now in the Old Testament, now I'm not going to talk about text because I'm assuming that, that you'll know the text yourself. There are texts in the Old Testament where God basically condemned severely uh, certain nations and God was so distressed with these nations that he told the Israelite people they were to be wiped out completely. God had judged these nations. So the Israelites were to go into their promised land and they were to go in and they were to wipe out these nations that God in fact had put a finger on and said you must destroy these people completely, everybody. Women, children, everything. Don't touch anything. Now, why did that happen? Well, the Old Testament tells you why. It is because they had completely broken all norms. Not only did they have their idols, but they also were burning their children, sacrificing them. They were doing just absolutely horrible things, such as, uh, I suppose, uh, in a sexual area, uh, animals. And then God put a note here as well that uh, they were lying or, or sleeping, if you like, with men with men and women with women. And God, in fact, told the Israelites, you are not to do what these nations do. You are not to accept the fact that men are to be lying with men and that women are not supposed to be lying with women. As far as God is concerned, that was a no-no in God's world. Now those texts are there. 
what some people are doing, of course, is they're saying things like, oh, well, it is, but, but there's no reason why we can't accept homosexuality people today in ministry, and etc., and etc. Well, if you go to the New Testament, if you go into the New Testament, Jesus himself said, I did not come to, in fact, invalid, if you like, to take away any of the law. And really, when you know your Bible a bit better, which I hope you're finding more and more, what's in the Old Testament, in fact, is in the New Testament. You know, you're not to steal, you're not to murder. You're to treat your neighbour the same as you love yourself. So really, the, if you like, the moral side of the Old Testament, uh, how you ought to behave, the Ten Commandments, whatever we do, if you, if you look at the Old Testament, you'll find that, in fact, the New Testament uh, requirements from God are exactly the same, except the ceremonial area. That basically has been abolished. I think we all agree with that. Jesus, in fact, came and he is the priest. He is, if you like, the link, link between man and God. So, homosexuality, if you like, God has never changed his mind. We are actually told in the New Testament that what has been written in the Old Testament has been written for our learning. So what is the learning? What do we have to learn about the Old Testament? Well, you just have to go to the Old Testament and have a look at what God requires. If God had put away any of those rules, that's fair enough, isn't it? You can go to the New Testament and say, all right, no, no, it doesn't matter anymore. But God has never changed anything in the Old Testament, in the, uh, if you like, the moral area of uh, his law. So God requires us as Christians to learn what it is required. Where do we get that? We get that from the New Testament and the Old Testament. And one of the things that God is not happy with is homosexual lifestyle. And that's what the issue is all about, isn't it? Some areas, of course, are saying, oh, no, it doesn't matter. Well, really, when you think about it from a, from a, from a Christian point of view, what should you really worry about? Well, really, the only thing we should worry about is what the Bible has to say. We can't really follow teachings of churches because and different denominations because there's thousands of denominations, aren't there? And they all believe they're right. So you can't really follow the rules of different denominations because they can't all be right, can they? Really, when you think about it, probably, probably, Nearly every denomination probably has an error, a mistake. And you know, think about the Mormons, isn't it? When the Mormon uh, first uh, had this great vision and, and he said to God in this uh, vision, of course, and the angel was there, which church is right? And the angel obviously said to him, oh, no, nothing, there's no denomination right. And so they started their own. The Mormons came into being, isn't it? Did it, are they right? No, you can't even go by that, can you? But the only rule you can really follow is the Bible itself, because the Bible does not change. In all the different denominations, they all have their bases, the Bible, our Bible, my Bible, the church's Bible. Do you agree with that? Right. Okay, so let's go back to the homosexual thing. So you have a situation then, of course, uh, in Sydney, there are a group of bishops who are not going to Lambeth because they're going to st stand up and say, no, uh, you are supporting the homosexual area and because of this, we feel that God's blessing is not on the conference. Now, I would have to say that that's right. If you do the wrong thing, can you expect God's blessing to be on if you do something that's contrary to God's rules? No, you can't. Well, it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't happen. 
if you disobey God, if you're breaking God's law, and homosexual is one of them, if you are breaking one of God's law and supporting it, and in fact saying that God is wrong, and that's what you're saying, you're saying God is wrong, if you decide that God is wrong, well then you do not have God's blessing, and that's the issue, isn't it? So, some people are standing up for what they believe is right, and so they are not supporting people who support homosexual um, ministry. There is a ministry for homosexual, isn't it? The homosexual really is, uh, we call people to Jesus Christ uh, in repentance to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there it is. I've got two bits of... <laughs> I've got two newspapers here. Lambeth boycott needed to stand by biblical view by Peter Jensen. He said, I had to announce later in the day our painful decision we will not go to the Lambeth Conference. I've, char I've characterised this debate not just one of sexual ethics but of faithfulness to the very message those ordinance had promised to uphold. So in the Lambeth, of course, 1998, the world one maintained the biblical view of sexual ethics, ethics, which is, of course, certainly that you can't embrace homosexuality. Anyway, we're not here to condemn, but I just thought I'd pull this out and have a talk about homosexuality because I think it's an issue, isn't it? And personally, I, I personally feel that, uh, that we don't condemn homosexuality people at all. Uh, we preach the gospel and call people to Jesus Christ. And then the Lord Jesus Christ will look after uh, everybody because Jesus wants everybody to come to him in faith. That's what the issue is all about. But I think it's probably right in the churches churches have their rules. In other words, to be a church member, you really need to be a Christian, and certainly you need to follow, if you like, uh, the rules, if you like, the heart of what the denominations believe. And that's fair enough. And if you don't follow the rules within your ordinary, or if you do not follow the rules of your church or your, ordinary, your denomination, then it makes reason to say that you basically shouldn't be in it, should you? And some people, of course, believe that uh, some people in the Anglican Church are, uh, are basically uh, refusing to follow the rules they had in the beginning, and they've changed the rules, and that's where the fight really is. Anyway, I'm not going to do any more now. That's what I'm going to do, 12 minutes. Do you realise I've just had a huge storm coming uh, through here about 2 o'clock? Strong wind and everything look on the radar to have a look and there's just storms everywhere. Anyway, what do you think? Do you want to uh, make a decision with homosexuality? I don't think you really have to because you and I as Christians, our job is not to condemn, our job is to call people to repentance. If you're a Christian, just live before the legion of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will look after you, care for you. He will tell you what to do. In a very real way, he will take you through life. He will take you home. If you're not a Christian, then that message is there for you, isn't it? God sent his son into the world. For God so loved the world that he led his own son to come in the world and to be sacrificed. Why was he sacrificed? So that... He would carry our sin. So when you come to Jesus Christ and you confess your sin, He forgives your sin and you become a child of God. And Jesus is alive today. He is living in me, you and all the Christians. And once you become a Christian, once again, you indeed will be a true child of God. I hope you're listening to what I have to say.
I'll just have a look at what's in the newspaper next time. But don't be uptight about the homosexual issues. You just live your life before the Lord Jesus Christ. Preach the gospel wherever you go. If you preach the gospel, God's Spirit will bring people under your gospel and they will come to Jesus Christ and have their sins forgiven. That's what they're going to worry about. If you're in the church, well, you have to make decisions, don't you? Most Christians are in churches. And if you're in a battle, of course, in churches regarding things like homosexuality, well, then really their decisions are going to have to work out. I don't know how I can help you at all in that, because uh, I'm not really completely in a church itself, but I'm certainly in the church of God with all the Christians. I'm just going to uh, close this down now. homosexuality 
especially Muslims, the action of some North Americans severely hurt the witness of these churches. Since then, patient attempts have been made to call the offending North Americans back to biblical standards. Many Americans, Anglicans, are now more aware of the distress which their actions have caused others and regret this. And at the same time, however, others have condemned attempts by Global South bishops to provide ministry for the Orthodox churches who still wish to be Anglican, but cannot continue to do so in the fellowship of the American churches. So really, that article definitely tells you that there is a split in the churches, isn't there? Because some people do want to follow biblical principles, but they cannot stay in the true body, the Anglican body, which is a pity, isn't it? I'll see you next time. 22 minutes, anyway. I'll catch you later. I hope you have a wonderful, close relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are not a Christian, do come to the Lord Jesus Christ and have your sins forgiven. I'll see you next time.